All right. I'm Tracy Ayer. This is a book by candlelight. It just released on Amazon. It's not wired yet because I'm busy doing my master's degree in publishing. It looks like this. If I can turn pages. There you go. So I have previously, I read from The Haunting of Luna Brina. It's a very supernatural book, so you're going to enjoy it. It's, it's not gory or assaultive. It's just supernatural and ghostly, so it's kind of cool. The Haunting of Luna Brina, I have read from. On Canvas and Shadow, I've read from. Then I remembered I didn't really read any of The Wrath of Shelter Island, which is a very interesting story. So we're going to go past, I can turn pages, Luna to The Wrath, and we're going to take a look at this one today. So I just want to warn you, I'm not a great reader. Um, you'd need my sister for that. I'm pretty sure she uh, is a really good reader. I'm not one of those type. So anyway, uh, but I'll still be giving a go at this so you can get a feel for how the story is written and what the writing is like, just in case you're wondering, should I get this book? Because, you know, I want to be creeped out. <laughs> yeah, it's really good for beaches at night. Through crossings untold and burrows boundless, I found my way to this island. She thought the words idly. In fact, she listened to distant thunder, the telltale cobalt speckling of rain, and like most, fell lulled by the occasional squeak of air brakes and the diesel wake of the bus's passage. But unlike most, it caused a deep resonance inside of Trudy Tuff. She could become as still as... Here I go. I screwed it up already. But I do want to say, this is where you get the real intro to what it is about Trudy um, that's causing the story. So if you're new to short stories, um, you have a, a small section and then you should really jump into it because especially if your story uh, recommendation is like 5,000 words or so. So let's go again. I'm right here. She could become as quiet and still inside as a stone, and it was because there was no easy and comfortable explanation forthcoming for this that she was here. Trudy didn't know what pulled her moods out like the edges of bed sheets, or like the tides that circumnavigated the island she was on just off the coast of New York State. Through no fault of her own, she wasn't very much like her sporty and dreamy sisters Amy and Vera. I'm going to kind of... Okay, here we go. Hopefully you can see that. Chalice, Ross, and Erica had taken all three of them on from different places. It showed up in their looks. Amy was tall. Amy was a tall, heroic Artemis with dark brown skin and eyes, thick dark hair, and she'd spoken Spanish as far back as she could remember. Bear was pale and gray-eyed like Minerva, but plump and romantic like Venus. True was skinny, quiet, brown-haired, and dark-eyed. Even when they first carried her into their lives, too small to walk, she'd had the stillness inside, and she was given to bouts of such deep quiet and a nerving hush that her less-than-delighted parents had taken her for testing. Yeah, there was no goddess for True. And other people chase phantom configure. Oops, and other people chase the phantom misconfiguration in her system to this day. Off to her left, lightning crawled the sky, followed by a terrific crack as it shattered what it sought to find. True tucked a hand under her chin, possibly the only warm body on the bus who hadn't jumped when that had happened. This invitation was the absolute culmination of months of work. Trudy was determined to see it go right, so she reminded herself to jump, to react, to be just like all the others. She was afraid it would go wrong somehow that her phone would ring and she would be yanked out of this bus and thrust back to the ferry she'd just crossed water on. Dragged back home by a magnet, she'd fought the good fight through test on test and deserved the earner of being here. And here was a nondescript road in trees. True checked her phone against the street signs again on all sides. Wide walkways and tall trees ensured privacy, but also meant that someone entering this world for the first time wouldn't really have anywhere to turn for help. 
She wasn't sure if that was exciting or not. She came to her senses in the rather upscale bus and shot to her feet. Right, of course. The bus had sloshed to a stop against a cobble curb, and True was left no choice but to snatch the handle of her rolling bag and head down the exit stairs. That bag was heavier by the mile, she swore. The door swished open. As she stepped out onto the curb and looked up into the patchwork of scattered brakes, the bus pulled away. Between squalls and flutters of her midi dress, she watched sun paint the land around her with great golden brushes, and for the first time in years had nothing to fall back on but promises. There was no one to meet her. True lingered to look up at the moving clouds around her until, at last, a gray, the gray plafond above her broke open to gold, and she stood with her face upturned, stroked by the sable rays, no differently than any tree or stone or tars in their path, but of course, very differently too. Then she shut her eyes in a sudden moment of stalled momentum, the sort of thing her parents warned of, complained of, dragged her to, do to a dozen psychologists of, and monitored it on calendars like a mental defect. Because for several beats, True was elsewhere, deep inside the sun. And for the first time in an age, there was no one there to stop. Hey, about time you got here, loser, said the girl who emerged from the SUV some feet away. True heard and felt the world again and turned her head. So I'm going to leave it here in case you want to pause it. Read to the bottom of the page. But this is the opening where you actually get an idea of what her powers are like. What supernatural thing has hold of Trudy? 